Good morning, my name's Nelson from Holman RV, located in Eastgate, Claremont County, Ohio. Going to be doing a walkthrough on a Cougar Sport. And the model is the 2700 BH, which stands for bunkhouse. So we're going to start at the front of the camper and work our way around and do the outside first. You have a propane tank on each side of the camper. On the right side of the camper is where the controls are. Right now you see the, the little knob is facing this way, which comes down to this tank. So this tank is in the on position, and the one on the other side is in the off position. You cannot fill these tanks while they're in the camper. You will have to remove them and take them somewhere to get them filled if you run out of, of gas. When you run out of one, you turn it off, turn the other one on, and flip that switch to the other side to the point it toward the hose that goes to the tank on the other side of the camper. At the front, you have two outside lights. You have the LED, yellow LEDs. You also have a pitch light. And the controls for those lights are right here on and off switches. You also have an additional light on the outside at the front to help you hook up either at night or in the morning before the sun goes down. Inside you have your spare in the front and your battery. And your battery shutoff switch is right here. Now even with the battery switch in the off position there's always a little bit of draw inside from the carbon monoxide propane detector. It's hardwired for safety purposes. So the only way to truly disconnect the battery would be to remove a terminal wire from the battery. This is the other side. There's your other propane tank. This is your pass-through storage. There's two switches at the bottom. One is constant on. The other one works off of an electric eye. So anytime uh, you pass in front of it, it'll come on automatically. This shutoff switch is for your solar power. You have a solar panel on top to charge your batteries while you're going down the road. And you can see that's in the on position right now. This is also for your solar hookup from the panel on the roof. You have two switches here that are extend and retract. This one is for the front leg controls. To make it taller, you just simply hit, hit extend. To lower the front, you hit retract. Then this one is for the rear jacks, which I'll show you when we get back there. But uh, this is your extend and retract for the stabilizers. Those rear ones are not jacks. So once you get your camper uh, level and off of your uh, vehicle uh, and you have your camper uh, level, then you extend the stabilizers. Do not use the stabilizers as jacks. You have a small hose for your sewer hookup, and this is a connect for an outside shower. So you have a hose, you can use any uh, garden hose adapter for the end of that. This is your external shower, and you have a light for the compartment. This is where you would put the pink stuff in when you winterize, and you would have this turned into the on position, that way it bypasses your water heater. Right now, this unit's been dewinterized, so winterize is in the off position, and you won't have to worry about that until the fall. This is your city water connection. So you can bring the hoses up through the bottom so you can close this panel. You simply unscrew that, and the hoses will come up from the bottom, including your cable TV. This is your tank, black tank flush. Now make sure that you have uh, a hookup to sewer or at the dump station before you hook up a hose and turn it on. Also make sure that the, the black is pulled. Otherwise it's going to go up through the toilet and you're going to have a mess to clean up. So when you are hooked up to your sewer, you want to first pull your black tank. They're clearly marked black and gray for you. That way you empty out all the stuff from the toilet and then when you pull the gray tank, it empties all the water from your shower and sinks so that it rinses out your sewer hose for you. 
This is an optional additional hookup for another solar panel if you so desire. This one is also hooked up for satellite. It's wired to the roof so you can easily add a, a, a satellite antenna to the roof and once it's hooked up then any of the connections inside would uh, for your TVs would work off of that. Otherwise if you're at a campground that has cable you, you bring the cable up through the, the bottom and hook it into the cable TV spot. You have a tankless water heater so there is no special winterization there is no tank just when you winterize the unit uh, the, the operator's manual says that any residual water is not an issue but they do require winterization as soon as the weather turns below freezing because it is susceptible to freezing and it would be a costly repair if that happens i'll go over more about the tankless water heater when we get inside. This is just an exhaust port. It is suggested that you get a screen to cover that to keep any mud daubers or other rodents to, to get inside your camper. Walk around to the back side. This is your fresh water connection, your 751 key. It's a silver key. Would fit this to open it up and this is where you would fill your fresh water holding tank. Uh, that way you would be operating off of your water pump. If you're hooked to city water, no need to use the water pump. Your drain for that is the blue hose. You just turn that knob and it drains your fresh water holding tank for you. This is your 50 amp connection. Your 50 amp hose. Right now it's hooked up to 30 amp. So you do have what we call a dog bone or just a uh, to, to take it from 50 amp to 30 amp. Now when you're running 30 amp, you can only use one air conditioner. If you're hooked up to 50, you can use them all. You do have a hitch on the back. That's not necessarily for towing a vehicle. <laughs> that is for uh, a bike rack if you so desire. This is simply an opening to get to the bottom bunk that's inside which I'll show you when we go in. I do have your awning out right now and the awning lights on. There's a uh, LED lights at the top of the camper at the edge of the, the awning. Uh, it's not fully extended right now because of our lack of space, but this is for sunshade only and possibly light rain, but if there's any wind at all, make sure you put that in because it serves as a sail and it'll rip it right off the side of your camper. So if you go hiking or go into town for dinner, uh, you never know what might blow in. So we would suggest putting that awning in when you leave for any period of time. You do have outside speakers. You have the easy steps. Simply fold up all the way in to the rail and lock in position. Now, if you need to extend or retract them, there's a pin that you can lengthen the legs to get them down. You just make sure your door is all the way open so you have clearance. And lower the steps. There's your other outside speaker, and this is your other pass-through. Now you have a plug here. This would be for an outside TV station. If you set up a table here on the outside of the camper, then you can simply plug in your cable into the cable spot, plug your TV in there, and you can have an outside television. So there's your full pass-through storage, and we're ready to go inside. When you first get inside, if you go up one step, we can get to your control panel. So this is for your slide in and out. This is the ceiling lights inside the camper. And this is for that awning light that I showed you outside, the LEDs at the top of the camper at the edge of the awning. This is your awning extend and retract. This panel 
There's four lights here that light up. So if you push the battery button, you can see we have a full battery. Press the fresh tank. We're full of fresh water in your holding tank right now. The black tank's empty and your grays are empty. This is your water pump. Now, if you're hooked to city water, you do not need to use the water pump. But if you're boondocking or stopping at a rest area and want to use water from your fresh water holding tank, that water pump button would need to be on. This is your uh, thermostat for your AC and your heat. So you push and hold the mode button until it comes on. Right now it's in the cool position and the up and down arrows adjust the temperature. So it's pretty cool in here today right now. As you hit, as you scroll through, you have the heat mode, a fan mode, and a dry mode. The dry mode is similar to like a dehumidifier. So if the temperature is not very hot outside, but, the, but it's humid, you might want to use the dry mode. It uses less power than the air conditioning does. To turn the system off, you simply push and hold until it goes to the off position and everything will shut off for you. At the steps, there's a little electric eye for a light for your steps. So any, it's kind of like a motion detector. So they light up automatically as you approach to go upstairs. We'll do the downstairs first. You have a couch here that folds out to a bed. And you have a dinette that makes a bed also. You simply pull the table off the two pedestal poles and then this table rests on the, the, the black moldings all the way around to make an additional bed. You have a TV. Right now it's operating off of your digital antenna. So it works really well. You'll be amazed how many channels you actually get. And your sound system is right here. And you have Zone 1 and Zone 2. Zone 1 is your inside speakers. Zone 2 is your outside speakers. You have a remote for your television. And that little box at the bottom is the propane and carbon monoxide detector I was talking about. So that little green light, that's... Uh, that's always going to be on even if your battery cutoff switch is in the off position. On your stove, you have a glass cover. When you're pulling, make sure that the glass cover is in the down position. It is glass. If it's left in the up position and you hit a bump, that glass is going to hit this cast iron and you're going to have a mess to clean up. You have a switch here for lights. If you flip it in the up position, it's just the burners. If you flip it in the down position, it's the burners and your oven light. Now this is nice because anytime one's turned on, the color changes from blue to red. So at a glance, you can tell that there's no gas going through your system with all the blue lights on. To light the burners, you turn it to the little flame and you have a spark igniter, just like a gas grill to light them. So we'll turn that one off. Again, same thing. Spark igniter. Just like that. Now to light the oven, you open the, the door and this one now works kind of like a gas fireplace. So you would turn this to the to the flame and then you would have to hold, you have to light a pilot light. So you have to push and hold this knob for about 15 to 20 seconds to bleed the gas line for your pilot light. And then while holding that button in, you would click the spark igniter and light the pilot light. Once the pilot light's lit, then you turn it to a, one of your uh, temperatures and the whole uh, panel would light up with flame for you for baking. You have plastic covers here to increase your cabinet space. Your pump is in the on position right now. You have a detract retractable hose and you can also change whether it's spray or solid. 
When we get to the bathroom, I'll explain your tankless water heater operation. You have a residential refrigerator. It's always locked, so you don't have to worry about your uh, groceries coming out when traveling. But every time you open it, you have to push a little button with your fingers to release the lock. Now there's a control up here for the level. And as you see, it says off-grid. So when you're traveling, you want to use level 2 or 3 when you're traveling to work off the battery. You have an inverter that changes it from uh, 12 volt to 110 to run your refrigerator. If you run it on 2 and 3 when you're traveling, you'll use less power and you'll be able to extend the life of that battery. You do have the solar panel that's charging your battery, so hopefully it will never be an issue. Once you get to where you're going and plugged in, then turn it up to the desired level 4 or 5. Same with your freezer. In the back, you have a sliding door for your bunk room, and you have three big bunks. So plenty of sleeping for kids or, or adults. And that's the panel that we showed you outside that goes into the bottom bunk. So you have three bunks on this one. You have a switch for your light. And you have USB ports and electric. And all three bunks have USB ports and electric. If you ever have any power issues, this is your electric box. This gets to your circuit breakers and it's marked what they're for. This is for your 12 volt system. You have fuses there. There's also a little panel to the right so a light will come on and tell you which one is blown so you don't have to pull and check every single one of them. It's also labeled what they're for. The vents in the floor are for your heat. And then you have vents in the ceiling that are white. That is for your air conditioning. You have an additional fan and light for your stove and you have a residential microwave. We like to put a kitchen towel around the plate when we travel to keep it from bouncing around. You do have a swivel TV so you can turn it toward your couch or your dinette. However when traveling make sure that's all the way in and there's a strap to lock that in place so that it cannot come out while traveling. We're ready to go upstairs. You have a nice big shower and you have the deluxe hose and shower head. Yep. You also have a porcelain toilet. Now to operate you would push the pedal halfway down, partially down to fill it with water. So that you can use it just like your toilet at home. Once you're done, push the pedal all the way to the floor and it sends it to the black tank. This is also where you would add the blue stuff into your black tank so that it breaks down the toilet or the, the toilet paper and the waste. This is your sink. And this is your the control for your water heater in the bathroom. So if you click that in the on position, right now it's reading 120. That is the same temperature as your uh, home residential water heater. You can increase it or decrease it on desired temperature. Now when you do operate this, uh, you want to turn on the hot water first. And when you turn that hot water on, you want to keep, keep it flowing until you start getting hot water. Right now it's telling you what the temperature is. It's already lit and it's increasing the temperature. I can feel the hot water now. So once you're getting hot water, then add the cold for desired temperature. If you turn on both handles at the same time, you may not get hot water. So you want to turn on the hot water first. Once you're getting hot water, then add the cold to get your desired temperature. Your GFI reset is here in the bathroom. 
and that's just the switch for the light. Ready to go into the bedroom. You do have a light underneath. There's a center push button to turn that one on and off for reading at night or just simply to get in the bed with the other lights off. You have a switch here on the wall to control your ceiling lights. And you do have an, an additional optional hookup for a bedroom TV. Your cable and electric would go here and it's marked where the backer is to put your television. You have a nice deep hang up closet on this side with three drawers. You also have storage under the bed. And cabinets on top, over the bed cabinets, and you have USB and electric on both sides of the bed. You have a vent over the bed, there's a manual crank and a switch. And that concludes our walkthrough of this model. Uh, you can download the app on your phone through the App Store. You can get all your manuals online that way and it has videos to cover some of the things we went over today in case you forget. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.